all anybody is talking about, at least in uh, social media around me, is this situation with uh, CM Punk and Adam Page and, and the John Moxley uh, open to Dynamite. And I, I'll just read directly from what you wrote in The Observer. You wrote, Right now, there is a ton of backstage drama involving many of the top guys that has gotten much worse in recent weeks. I think my question based off of that comment or based off what you wrote is, is this like growing pains or is this a big issue that they sort of need to figure out because it could explode in your point of view? I think it's a big issue. I wouldn't have written about it if I didn't think it was a big issue. The, um, but it's, it's definitely, I mean, when I say it got worse, it got worse on Wednesday. You know what I mean? But I mean, there's been stuff. I mean, I'll say this, you know, Tony Khan is in a, uh, it has been in, in a very, very tough position that I wouldn't wish on anyone. Um, managing a lot of different people have a lot of different ideas of what wrestling is right now. And a lot of people, you know, I mean, a lot of people are being pulled in different directions and a lot of people are having people talk in their ears and making situations a lot worse. And, um, you know, so it's it's just a lot of stuff that's it's you know i guess it probably you know dates back to you know the adam page and cm punk um you know promos before the, the one promo right before their pay-per-view mm -hmm. but i don't think you know it's like i i remember we talked about you know like how you know that was it was what the backstory was on that but it wasn't um it didn't really play into anything and i didn't know I didn't realize how upset punk was and you know then punk got hurt so he never really he never expressed it and then he comes back so now it becomes a story again because he did that promo and you know it was not to build up a match with adam page at all you know whether they now go there because they think they have something hot maybe they will um but um you know but that would be tough too because i don't think that you know, I don't I don't know where Punk's head is going to be on doing something with Adam Page. He may he may just go. It's business and it's fine. And he may just go. No, you know, I didn't do that for business. And, um, you know, and there's other plans and there are other plans. So you'd also written that the the catalyst seems to be this situation that had happened where Colt Cabana wasn't going to be uh, re-signed. And then Tony actually did put him, uh, did sign him to the ROH brand. And I imagine that some of the talent was kind of frustrated at that, knowing who has, has the most frustration with Colt Cabana uh, being, being CM Punk. And I, I, that, that is so interesting, not, not in the fact of like, cause you know, in, in the wrestling business, I, I've read so many things that that and, and just in, in business in general, you know, any company has has a lot of these scenarios where people just don't get along or they don't like each other. But it seems, I, I guess, to me, one, one of the differences is with AEW is how many people seem like, oh no, like the friendship with this guy is way more important than, uh, you know, maybe the business or whatever. Like that, that's what's intriguing to me is how many people are like, like this is a big deal to us and why this thing still exists like it's still a story even though that you know what had happened happened a while ago yeah i think um you know there's a lot of perceptions about a lot of different things um and i think that you know there i think that there were people when aws formed i don't even think i know there were people when aws formed and the idea was that they wanted a company without that drama you know, without the backstabbing um, and, you know, they and 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 they thought it was possible. And, um, you know, maybe it was there's always disagreements. I mean, there's always been disagreements from day one. I mean, like the idea that nobody that everybody agreed on any, everything. I mean, I mean, look, I don't even agree with anybody on everything. You know what I mean? I don't agree with my best friends on everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? But so, so people are not going to agree on everything and that's part of business and that was going to happen. Um, but this is, this is not the same thing. This is, um, you know, I mean, that's just, you know, this is something that is, uh, you know, they have to work out and maybe they will, and maybe they'll end up stronger because of it. But, you know, it's just a, it's definitely a, a, a tough time for uh, Tony Khan. And, and, you know, I think partially, 
because it's a you know it's a tougher time for AEW. Yeah. Um, I think if AEW was in the position it was in a year ago, um, you know, there would be a different, I think there'd be some different stuff because like when, when everything is good and you're, you're, you know, like, you know, let's face it a year ago right now, they were on the verge of beating raw, you know, and they did a couple of weeks in September and they were not far off and their house show business in quarter four beat WWE's in quarter four. So it's, it's like, you know, they were like in the hunt and it was very exciting that, that this three-year-old, his two-year-old company at the time, two-year-old company is out there, um, you know, beating this, you know, company that's 13 times as big. And now, you know, like the way the trajectory was going, you know, it's like, oh, you know, they're the ones rising and these the other guys are falling every year. And then it stopped. Yeah. And now, you know, the, the situation is reversed. Now it's AEW that's falling and WWE that's that's really doing great. And so that brings out a lot more, you know, that's going to bring out a lot more frustration across the board than a year ago um, when there's disagreements now, you know, there's that. And now it's, um, it's just, it's, it's, it's a tougher thing. And now it's like, you know, um, you know, Tony, Tony was in a sense, um, you know, it, it, you know, they were never, they were never at the point that WCW was as far as, you know, as popular or anything like that. It was a different year, obviously back then yeah. way more popular, but, but they were on the rise and they were being, you know, being very, very competitive. Um, and they didn't, and they didn't have to have Hulk Hogan and all those guys to do it. And then, you know, things happened and WWE went up. And when that happened with WCW, I mean, we saw WCW just freaking collapse. And so, these guys are not going to collapse because Tony's too smart to collapse out of stupidity. Right. Okay. That, you know, he's not going to do the dumb shit that WCW did, but, but there's still a, a trajectory and there's still the realities. I mean, the one thing when I started seeing this coming a couple months ago is, you know, I started thinking about like all the different wrestling wars in history. And there are times when that, when that one group, you know, when it becomes to the average fan, like there's a dog fight, it's very exciting. And, you know, you kind of want to get behind the group that's on the way up. But again, right now you want to get behind the group that's on the way up. And, um, you know, that is very difficult for the other group. Um, you know, I mean, when, when one group starts, when the, when the exist, it's, it's, you know, whatever, when the powerful group starts to dominate the number two group struggles, and that's just wrestling history. It's always been like that. It doesn't matter how how your booking is and it doesn't matter how many great matches you have i mean and that's gone back for 100 years you know i mean maybe great matches mean more than they ever have but they're not the be all and end all because if they were you know let's face it you know there would be the the hierarchy in pro wrestling would be very very different across the board um and you know i just remember you know it's just a lesson that you learn you know i mean if you watch wcw in 1989 and you how great some of those shows were and and they they had a terrible business year you know even with rick flair against steamboat which didn't do well and rick flair and terry funk which did do well at, at certain points mm -hmm. but but still you know i mean they still at the end were not doing well rick flair had this incredible year and and they were in worse shape at the end of the year than they were at the beginning because it's just not about providing great matches and great pay-per-views it's there's just so many other aspects of this you know and yeah. it goes back Whatever. I mean, I just remember Paul Bosch, you know, telling me about when he there were he was in a promotional war in Los Angeles. And this is probably the 1940s. Um, and he said that, like, the the other group had so much better. He said they had so many that their wrestlers were so much better than ours. And and we couldn't fit. We, we you know, we thought that we were going to be in trouble because they had better wrestlers. And, and this is before television. So it's not like TV mattered. But, you know, his side was the side that had bigger name wrestlers. And no matter how many great matches those other guys were having, and he said they just blew us away, you know, on the, on the, as far as the show went, we didn't have guys who could do what those guys could do. But we outdrew them constantly because, you know, we had bigger names to the public. And no matter how great their matches were, we, they, couldn't, they couldn't catch up. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned uh, the competition thing, because I remember when AEW was formed and some of, uh, you know, our friend John LaRocca, he and I were talking about how not only is it great 
that there's going to be this alternate company with with wrestlers. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's 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 absolutely great that there's an AEW. Anyone who who thinks differently, you know, it's just like I mean, wrestling is so much better because that there there is one. But the other thing we were wondering is if Vince McMahon still has his fastball, this is this would be the time for him to show it, right? And it, and he didn't. It 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 it, it didn't happen, but. This this little uh, bump for for WWE or you know the whole the whole year essentially, like that's all under Vince's control now. Triple H is there now, and he'll probably get uh, at least He's, from the hardcore fans, he'll get a little bit more praise. But this was all Vince. Um, the upswing in WWE started with Vince. Yes, absolutely. It started. It really started after WrestleMania. You know that was really the that was really when I started seeing, you know, the difference in the sense that all of a sudden. The, um, you know, I mean, AEW did great business in Los Angeles, you know, in Detroit, obviously. Um, and, and, and good, you know, they were good all, all around, but WWE did start growing, um, after WrestleMania, whatever it was, that was the period. It was not, you know, the Vince McMahon scandal, which the Vince McMahon scandal was a giant thing for television ratings for sure. But the fact is, is that there were signs under Vince McMahon and I, you know, I've told people this, they don't want to hear it, but it's like, yes, it was, it was stuff under Vince that whatever it was that happened at, at WrestleMania, whether it's just um, the star power of the celebrities or the magnitude of WrestleMania or whatever, WrestleMania made people think that Stone Cold, whatever, WrestleMania made people think, hey, you know what? They, you know, they're the, they really are the major leagues. AW never could do that show. They could never do that. They perhaps they had a chance to do it and didn't try because they wanted to be conservative. Um, but the feeling was is like, hey, they can't do that. You know, I mean, I think if they had done a pay per view in Los Angeles first time out, I'm not saying that they would have done um, what was a WrestleMania fifty seven thousand paid, probably not. But they could have done, I mean, thirty, which which is still impressive as hell. You know, if they you go into twenty seven thousand seat stadium, sell it out for a big show, you know, outdoors, something with a great great look. You know, kind of like that look of SummerSlam. I remember when SummerSlam started, it's like, I really liked the look of the show yeah. being in that outdoor stadium. Um, and AEW has has never done that. And that's one of those things where, you know, people go, that's the major league. Whereas before, I think that there was, you know, a lot of stuff. I mean, if I look at the, like last year when they did the SummerSlam in Vegas, they had a great crowd and AEW was in um, the now arena. But when I looked up like the Google trends, it was like there was way more interest because of and it's because of punk. Um, and there was even, you know, when uh, comparing other big shows, um, the AEW big shows really had a lot of interest. And, um, you know, but I think after Mania, even though, um, you know, the the um, the 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 um, Double or nothing did very well, but you know, it went against that that big basketball game, right? The killer basketball game. Yep. And then game seven uh, of the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah. You gave the game seven, right. And then um and then Forbidden Door, you know, actually did better than I think almost anyone expected, but you know, it's still that still was something of um, you know, can, you know, that was more of a live show concept in the sense of something seeing something that that wasn't gonna um that wasn't going to hit the masses as big as an all AEW show just because, you know, most of those fans that watch AEW television uh, do not watch New Japan World. So there might be some intrigue, but it wasn't going to be as big. But it was, you know, perhaps the show of the year. It was an incredible show and 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 was also a success on pay-per-view. But it's not, um, you know, it's not like that's something that, um, you know, the average person the average wrestling fan that watches SummerSlam is going to go, oh, well, but Forbidden Door it was like way better wrestling, which was. Do you think it's possible, though, that the build to Forbidden Door and the disjointedness of some of those stories because of what that show was, do you think it could have, in the long run, hurt more than, than the pay-per-view helped because of, of the TV? I mean, you know, I know what you're saying, and and the thing is, is that, like, I don't think it was long enough because if you really think about it, it was only three weeks of TV mm -hmm. or four, four, you know, because the first week they didn't really even have that much done. You know, um, there were three weeks where they were definitely like shuffling because you didn't know who was going to be there. Right. And, you know, you really didn't know the card until the end. And, and, and um, there was some of that. And I mean that, you know, for a couple of weeks, 
I think that it kind of took away some storyline trajectory and stuff. So, but I don't think that that in and of itself was the, you know, that, you know, it, it, it hurt for a few weeks, but I don't think that it's like, it's not a killer. And I think that they, they had shows that did well after that. Um, but, um, you know, I mean, and, and, you know, to, to be fair, but, and granted, you look at WWE and it bucks this trend, but I mean, the fact is, is that WWE's success, um, in bucking the trend doesn't change the trend. And that is, you know, I mean, there were some Wednesdays and, and this, I mean, if you look at the, the, um, the ratings for, for cable every day, which I do look at every day, they are so much lower than they were even a year ago. I mean, like these bad, what we would call, you know, below average, I shouldn't say bad because definitely first place is never bad ever. Okay. Um, you know, when you're first for the night, especially for a company, you know, this, you know, as new as AEW and it's as, as a sporting company. Um, but you know, like the, the, the amount of viewers on Wednesday, just watching cable compared to a year ago really is down. And that's AW is, you know, that's part of it too. I mean, so I, I want to talk the rating in a second because I think the rating and then some of the stuff in the WWE call kind of all relates together. And, and uh, so but, but did, you, did you hear about the Big Ten thing? Yes. OK, so that's that was a, you know, a continuation of the, you know, the the value of sports rights. Yeah. Uh, but before we before that, you, you had one more com- you had one more thing that you'd written that I wanted to read uh, that I thought was really interesting. You said. It feels like a number of people are close to their breaking point if things don't get settled. And I started to wonder, obviously, Tony's the boss. Does he need some sort of management help, some sort of structural help? Like, because they, they did bring some people in to be liaisons and to, and to help. Yeah, out I, the I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that's I don't think that that's the issue as much as he's just been he's in a tough position because you have a lot of guys with with a lot of egos who want to do certain things. And he's been very good at letting people do a lot of what they want, but sometimes there's situations where you have two guys who are in a program who want completely different things right? and have leverage. You know, it's one thing if like Chris Jericho gets to do, you know, a lot of what he wants, but everybody that he's working with, you know, they're kind of like, okay, you know, Chris is a smart guy. He's probably smarter than we are. He's been <laughs> in the business forever. And, and, you know, if we're in a, if we're in a program with Chris, we're going to get a spotlight. We're going to get TV time that we may not get. And if I'm in a match with Chris, it's going to be high on the card and it's going to be, you know, it's going to be either, you know, a, a strong match on TV or a strong match on pay-per-view. So, you know, you know, we'll, be, we'll let Chris do a lot of this stuff and, and they're not going to they, like fight back on him because they know that they're in better shape. But when you have other people, you know, who are not thinking on the same, you know, thinking the same way of different philosophies or just different mentalities, um, you know, and, then it then it's you know then yeah tony kind of step in and go this is how it's going to be done which he does do but when he does it it leaves hurt feelings yeah you know um which the same would happen with vince you know or with and will eventually happen to levesque too you know i mean you know that that you know it's it's that's that's all inevitable you don't get that right away because you know right you know tony started as the cool boss and 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 everything and now um you know but there's times where you just got to and, and he's been doing, you know, he's done that too, where you just got to, you know, put your foot down and say, I mean, the funny one is, is, you know, sometimes you got to say, Hey, you've got to win this match, which is the <laughs> one thing that Vince's guys never really had. Yeah. You know, you've got to win this match. You can't lose this match. <laughs> and other times it's, you've got to lose this match. I'm sorry. You just, I'm, I'm doing winners and losers and you've got to lose this match. Uh, and then you had another note about, you think uh, MJF is possibly returning soon, which, um, you know, would, would be a nice little crescendo. Uh, well, at least everybody's back, you know, finally, except for, um, I guess Jeff Hardy wouldn't, wouldn't be, and I don't know what the situation with Adam Cole is. But they had know. that great crescendo at, at All Out last year, and I don't know if that's the situation this year, but it would be, you know, the nice timing of, oh, of yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that show and him coming back, I think, would, would be pretty pretty big for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just like get a couple of guys. The thing is, is it's like there's nobody, like there's no big forbidden door. I mean, yeah, MJF can come back and be that, but it's like um, every New Japan guy has been around. Yeah. Um, and and you know, and 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 it's not like again, it's not like there's some some guy from from you know like you know, I mean, one of the one of the you know, there's no more stings. 
You know, I mean, I guess there's Bill Goldberg, but he's still got a contractual affiliation with uh, with WWE as well. So um, there's Dave Batista, but they're not going to get him. You know, that's not going to happen. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, they, they could have had Ric Flair, but that fell apart. And um, and then Rick, you know, would have only been a, a temporary fix anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, he wasn't he's obviously, you know, he in no way could be a game changer for them at this stage of the game. And And because of the bad pub, you know, it's just like it's not even. I mean, obviously, he's not there, so that tells you what they think. Yeah. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.